May God's wisdom and God's ways be heard in the scriptures and in the sermon and in our hearts. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to church today. Glad you're here. Sometimes it's hard to come to church. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to come to church, not only because it's early in the morning or you're not in the habit, but as someone who has to uh, talk about the scriptures and preach from the Bible on Sundays, it seems like you hardly ever come to church, if you're really honest, come to church and you hear those scriptures and you go, oh yeah, I get that. That was easy. That's what I thought. I mean, you hardly ever get affirmed exactly, you know, the scriptures don't lend themselves that way. Like, yeah, I knew that, and that was good, and I get to go home and have lunch now and feel just great, because Jesus is always saying things that, like, just take the oxygen out of the room. You know, when he says things, people's jaws hit the floor. When he says things, everybody goes, oh my gosh, did he just say that? So, for example, just think of the things you hear about. And the, I mean, it's the stories he tells, and it's the, the teachings he says, and, and the people he meets. There was a time when uh, one of the stories, for example, one of the stories was a woman who had been a, a notorious, or at least she's known in the community as someone who's probably like a prostitute. And she shows up at one of the dinners, an all-male affair, were fairly formal, and the men are gathering around the table and she comes in crying and comes up to Jesus and starts crying at his feet. And she wets his feet and starts wiping his feet and kissing his feet. And he just lets her do it. And everybody around the table is going, oh, who is she and what does she do? Unbelievable. And then he, he stands up and he, he tells the person whose house it is, who's throwing the dinner, he says, you know what, when I came here, I don't remember you giving me any water for my feet when I came in, but she's been crying on my feet. And I don't remember you giving me a holy kiss, but she's been kissing my feet. And so Simon, you know, where there's been great love shown, there's a lot, a lot of forgiven there. I mean, can you imagine him doing that at a dinner party? Gosh. Then there was a time when... Hmm, he, was, he decided it would be a good idea not to hang out in, in the Jewish part of town or in the country, but go across the lake over to where the Gentiles live. And the disciples had to think, why are we going to the place that's like designated awful? <laughs> and when he got over there, a man who's like mentally ill and full of all kinds of mental illness um, comes out of the tombs and, and the disciples are going, see, I told you, why do we even come here? And Jesus uh, heals the man, and he becomes uh, quiet and in his, in his right mind. And the disciples must have just been like, did you just see that? <laughs> or the time when he's drawing in the sand, this lady had been caught, apparently, like, it sounds like her and her lover were caught in bed, and she, they weren't married. And, and they, they dragged the lady out in the street and says, you know, this lady was caught in adultery. Uh, which one do you want to, to uh, start stoning her? And they asked Jesus, should we stone the lady or not? And Jesus didn't even answer. I mean, he just says, well, you know what? Uh, whoever, can, whoever hasn't sinned yet, you can pick up the first stone. You go ahead. And everybody's got to say, did Jesus? Wow. I mean, almost everything about the guy, about Jesus, is like a big wow. Everything. You don't get a day off when you come in and go, oh yeah, well, yeah, that's right. So today, when he tells the story, well, he's giving a teaching from a, a series of sayings he probably gave, and, and they collected him in, the, in a little couple chapters in the Bible. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. And he says all these sayings like, that go in this pattern. You have heard that it was said in ancient times, but I'm going to tell you something completely different. So we just read from Leviticus, the first Old Testament reading, what Jesus was quoting. He says, you have heard that it was said, love your enemies, and uh, don't take vengeance on your family <laughs> or your kin. No, 
So love the people that are right around you, meaning other Jewish people, and love them. And you can take vengeance on somebody else as long as they're not in your family. So, so you said, that's what you've heard from Leviticus. But I'm going to tell you something completely different. I'm going to tell you to uh, love your enemies. And don't take vengeance on anybody. In fact, if they want to sue you, just forget the whole thing. Just give them your coat and your shirt and that'd be fine. But don't go to court. If you heard that, but you're hearing it right now, you've got to go, what, what was that? About love your enemies? That's like pretty bizarre. And way over the top and almost, well, it's impossible. Why do we even say that? And Jesus says back in response, he says, you know what? Everybody loves those who love who loves them. That's the way of the world. That's what everybody does. I just want to be a little different. And as you say, I want to be completely different. I want you to love like God loves. God loves everybody. He sends the rain. And it doesn't just make it rain on the good people. It rains on the good people and the bad people. That's what you should be like. And when the sun comes up in the morning, it doesn't just shine and on the good people. It shines on the good people and the bad people. That's what your father is like. Your heavenly father is like that. You should love like that. If you love just the people who love you, that's pretty boring and pretty ordinary. And look at the world you get. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Gandhi had this famous thing. An eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth makes the whole world blind and toothless. <laughs> So Jesus says, everybody does that. Even the tax collectors, which we all hate, do something good for other tax collectors. Try to be better than that. Which sounds kind of right until you start thinking about it. Love your enemies. You know, there are, I hate to be picky here, but there are some churches who make a living on hating their enemies. You know, they have to have something to hate or an enemy out there to fight against, fight against the world and fight against other churches they don't like. And you, They can't have a church unless they're mad at somebody. <coughs> I'm not sure that this passage would say, no, you have to love even the people you don't agree with. We just came back from council yesterday. Council is when all the Episcopal churches in the area, over a long, big geographic area, from the valley up to... Well, up to where? I don't know, up here. <laughs> they all get together, about, about 90 or so congregations. We all get together once a year. And about three years ago, um, our church nationally approved the possibility that people, priests and bishops, they could bless and, and uh, have unions of same-sex relationships. They didn't call it marriage. They said, well, you can bless their relationship. That's been a big deal for years and years and years. That happened about three years ago. And all across the country, people have been figuring out what to do with that. How to do that. Because some people, that's a big controversial issue, right? So at, at council, we, after all this time, we, we finally got together and the bishop was unbelievable. And the Reconciliation Commission, who helped him, were fantastic. They set up a system, a way, a, a method, for people to talk together about that issue with nobody judging anybody, nobody getting angry, nobody trying to prove a point, but everybody got to say what they felt. On that issue, that's a pretty good thing. So you had 500 people break up into groups of four or five with a little facilitator at each group. And everybody got to say how they felt. And nobody got upset, although it was emotional, but nobody like, uh, got in fights, nobody, uh, nobody yelled or screamed. Everybody just said, here's, here's what I think about that. Here's what I think about the Bible. Here's what I think about theology. Here's what I think about my experience. And, and everybody went back to their table. And they didn't solve anything. They, nobody tried to win. They just said, let's just hear it from your brothers and sisters. I mean, a lot of churches couldn't do that, you guys. It's a good time to be an Episcopalian. So, Jesus says, love your enemies. And, the, and that might be somebody you think differently on that issue. You think, well, I don't like that person because they think about that. And I think the other way. <laughs> 
It's funny. If you, if you have to uh, agree with uh, everybody on everything, you'd be a very lonely person. <laughs> right? Jesus says, if you greet in the scripture, if you greet and say hello only to those people who say hello to you, what's so good about that? And you know, the funny thing was the bishop, sneaky little devil that he is, and the way they set it up, they made sure that the groups had opposing points of view. I don't know how he did that, but he did. At least by his intuition. You know, that's kind of a conservative group, it's kind of a liberal group. And so they were forced to be with people who said something different than you. And you had to greet them and say. One of the things people always say when they hear this passage, which clearly I, I agree with you, it like sounds unbelievable, sounds impossible. Love your enemies. Because we just had a horrible week in the world, right? And we look at the news in the past two weeks, week and a half. I mean, there are horrible things happening between enemies all over the world. There's a war in Syria. They can't figure out the peace talks. Horrible things happening. There's a riots in Ukraine, in Kiev, Ukraine. There are riots in Thailand, in Bangkok. There's bad things happening in Venezuela. I mean, all over the world, from South America, Europe, Middle East. Everybody's fighting. Everybody's angry. Everybody's giving an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And Jesus probably said, look, I told you. If you want to do the eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, everyone's going to end up blind and no teeth. So, it sounds impossible, but look at the alternative, y'all. I'm not sure that's doing all that great. But nevertheless, before we project all of our uh, problems with this passage onto other people and say, well, I can't love, and you list off the ten worst people in history, which everybody's going to say, That'd be, how would you love that person? Before you do that, I, had a, I planted a tree in my yard about um, two weeks ago. I got the tree for free. It didn't cost me a thing. I got it from a city giveaway of trees. So it's a pecan tree. I don't know if it's a good tree or a bad tree, but I put it in my yard. I dug a hole. First hole I dug, I hit the uh, sprinkler system. <laughs> so I dug another hole. Put up the pipe, put a little piece of tape on it, good to go. We'll see. So I dug the other hole and I put the tree in there and I went to the store and I bought the good soil. My soil is terrible. I put some good soil in there and then I put the mulch around it and that cute little donut thing so that the water goes in and the weeds stay out. And, and I, I was so proud of my little tree. And then I took a picture of it. Look at my little tree. It's going to be huge. I'll get the con harvest. I'll make a million dollars. And, and then the next day a, a branch is broken off a tree. I thought, oh, those little, those little deer things. Well, those deer, I have a lot of deer in my area. So I went out with a piece of packing tape and I taped the branch back up. Well, it, it, maybe it'll come back. Every morning, that thing is an inch lower or a foot smaller. This is like salad for, for a deer. <laughs> There's a twig planted in my yard now. It's about this big, there's one branch on it. It's not going to make it. <laughs> now, I used to think those deer were so cute. <laughs> I hate deer. <laughs> the dogs, I was late for work the other day, and I was carrying a briefcase and my lunch and a computer to the car, and I have two dogs that bring it work with me sometimes, so I was trying to do it, all, do it all in one trip, so I opened the car doors and the dogs know where to go to get in the back and I lowered one seat so they could get in. But I thought, I don't want to do two trips. Uh, so I took the dogs off the leash and said, okay, we're going to go to the car now. So they start going around eating all the deer poop in the yard. But I'm in the car saying, let's go, I'm late, come on, I got the lunch, computer, and the bag. And the dogs are like, no, we'll be there in a minute. <laughs> And so then uh, one of them comes, the other one, who is kind of like a child, and you say, if they don't come until like the fourth time you say it, and you have to like be really mad at them. Otherwise they pretend they don't hear you. The dogs, you can hear a pin drop, you know, four blocks away. They don't hear your voice somehow. <laughs> so I finally run up to the dog and say, you get in the car. I had my keys in my hand. I threw my keys at the Get off that poop and get in the car. <laughs> and my keys are all messed up. <laughs> I said, I hate that dog. 
never listens to me. Then the person who, when you go to um, La Cantera Mall sometimes, it's a mall out on 1604, very busy place. It's very, yeah, everyone's got to circle around for parking spaces. And you, this is the kind where you, you are so busy, you'll wait for a parking space when you see someone getting in the car. And you wait with your blinker on, saying, oh, I'm going to go in there when that person comes out, so nobody go in there. Have you ever had the situation where you get the blinker on and somebody turns in front of you and takes the spot you were waiting for? I hate that person. <laughs> but alone you get into politics, you guys. You say, turn on the news and say, I hate Rachel Maddow. All she does is talk about how bad conservatives are. I hate Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh, blah, blah, blah. I hate George Bush. Well, I hate Barack Obama. Everybody hates everybody. You don't have to go to like, you know, push the Hitler button to go, well, I can't do that passage because nobody could like Hitler. Buddy, you can't like the person you can't like your own dog. You don't like deer. You don't like anybody in politics. You don't like anybody. You hate everybody. One of my neighbors, who I hate, <laughs> they, we all have neighbors around us, of course, more than one neighbor. It's a neighborhood. One neighbor right next to me on a big trash day, you know, heavy trash day, they cut down a bunch of uh, cedar trees, pile them up out by the curb. The other neighbor across the street called the police on the neighbor with the trees branches in the, out in the street because they were too far out in the street. They called the police because the branches were too many feet away from the curb. I hate that guy. So really? Is that really? Jesus says, you've heard that it was said, you know, love your neighbors and don't take vengeance on anybody in your family. You heard that, but I'm telling you, you need to love your enemies. And don't take vengeance on anybody. You can't hate anybody. You just can't. If you want to be my disciple, the rule is nobody gets to hate. It's going to be hard, because there are a lot of things you want to hate. Maybe some people deserve hate, maybe. But he says, you have to be like my Father in Heaven, who lets it rain on everybody. And lets the sun rise on everybody. And when he said that, I'm sure all the oxygen got sucked out of the room. Everybody said, What? So when you hear the scripture today, which is just astounding and amazing, of all the scriptures, all those stories that make you go, What? This is the one that for me is like the big what. It's like, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That still kind of rocks my world. And I go, What does that mean? Jesus says, everybody does it the other way, where you get to love the people who love you. Everybody does that. I'm going to show you another way. This is God's way. This is my way. You don't just love people who love you. You have to love everybody. Whether you like them or not, you have to love them. That's my way. Come follow me. So I guess I gotta go back and apologize to the dogs and apologize to the deer and apologize. <laughs> well, I'll do my best. I offer this to you in God's name. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>